Hello, this is Red and April Off-Grid. We're building our off-grid home in the Arizona desert. In our last episode, we painted the ceilings and installed all of the cabinets. Now we're painting those cabinets and the rest of the entire house. Here we're making some cover panels for the sides of some of these cabinets. Some of them have exposed particle board on the showing surface, and so in those cases I want to make something to cover that up so that it'll take the paint and look nice. And so I'm using quarter inch plywood here to do that. I've cut them to size and now I'm just getting them kind of sanded down and fitted into place, marking them. And then we plan to paint them first and then we'll glue them on later. Next I'm moving on to cabinet door prep. We're trying to get these ready to paint and there's actually quite a bit that goes into getting these cabinet doors ready to paint and the cabinets themselves ready to paint. And we'll go into more detail on that later, but here I'm just starting to do some of the initial sanding, rough sanding, and I'll come back and do some repairs later on. Something else I'm working on is prepping these little wall sections above the poured concrete wall. They take a little bit of special attention since we'll be leaving the wood exposed, and so it's a little bit of extra work to get ready for paint. April is getting ready to start working on painting the cabinet doors. She has a fair amount to do before she can get going on that. She has to wipe everything down. She has a little bit more sanding that she needs to do. And then she's also putting paper down underneath. And unfortunately, even though these workbenches have a total length of about 17 feet, and they're about two and a half feet wide, they only hold about half of the cabinet door. So it's going to take a couple of batches to get these done. April is painting the cabinet doors now. She's starting on the backs of the doors, which is a smooth, flat surface. And she's using a roller to put on the paint. It's an enamel paint that has an oil additive, so it'll dry to a nice hard shell. And you're starting to get your first look at the color that we've chosen for the cabinets. We wanted to bring some color into the house through the cabinets. And so we went with what's called a glass tile is the name of the color. We call it more of an aqua mint green. It's a bit of a nod to a mid-century modern color, and I think it'll go well in the home. With that first coat on, she's ready to move on to the cabinet faces. She's wiping those down first and getting those cleaned off and ready for the paint. The uppers need a little bit more attention, need some more cleaning out, so she's wiping those down good and then vacuuming those out just a little bit to get ready to start painting on these uppers and lowers. I'm moving on to another one of those sections above the poured concrete wall. There's four of these, you know, one on either side of the concrete wall, two concrete walls. They all take a little bit of special attention. This is my last one to do, and actually you can see April in the background there through the door getting on her first coat of paint on one of the uppers there, looking nice. Anyway, my preps on this wall include putting the tape over that 2x4 board. We want to leave the wood framing around this upper section above the poured concrete wall and around the rest of the wall actually exposed. We think it'll bring in more of an industrial look, but it does present some challenges. I'm going to have to tape over the wood to keep from, you know, getting paint on the wood and then also seal up between the wood and the drywall so that there's not a, a gaping crack there. And so I'm putting some tape on the wood and some caulk into the crack. This was kind of messy and difficult to do with precision and we'll find out later when I peel the tape off how well it worked. And here April's continuing to paint the faces of these cabinets. It's working well. She's using a roller to get most of the faces and then doing a little touch up with a brush. We were worried a little bit about whether this paint would run, you know, since it's vertical surface and it's a fairly heavy paint, you're always worried about it running, you're starting to get drips, but we really didn't have any trouble. April put it on nice and thin and it seems to be kind of self-leveling, but, and it soaks into the grain of the wood real nice, leaves a good finish. Now it's the monsoon season, so we're getting some nice afternoon rains occasionally, and we, we love it whenever it rains here. So we always get distracted and end up taking walks and looking around the place, seeing where the water's running and seeing what's going on throughout the property. So we've ended up you know, spending some time in the afternoons doing that, just enjoying the weather. We let these doors dry overnight, and now April is flipping them over and getting ready to paint the front face. The front face has a lot more detail than the back side. It's got all those grooves in it, and then of course the detail all around the perimeter. So she's doing going to do most of this by hand. She may at times use a roller to kind of get the paint on, but she'll definitely finish up by hand with a hand brush. She just wants to make sure that she gets the, the grain of the paint going along with the grain of the wood. And so she takes her time and, and does it right. You can see in the background, I'm just working on painting some of the walls while April does the cabinet painting. And you can see here some of the detail on these door faces. It's pretty challenging painting these. We were definitely worried that it would dry unevenly. 
And in fact, when you first put the paint on it, you can really see those, the brush stroke marks. But given a little time, it levels out. And it did advertise that it had self-leveling ability, and it, it seems to work really well. Also might mention that this paint is made specifically for cabinets, and it seems to be really good stuff. While April's been working on the cabinets, I've been busy in the guest bedroom and bathroom. Here I'm working in the bathroom painting. We did most of it in white, but we did a few accent walls in a canvas color, including the closet. So I'm just finishing up in there. So our main colors in here will be white, a canvas brown, and gray. We got about an inch of rain since yesterday, but we still have water coming into the pond. It's overflowing into the swale. And then it was running out this side, so I blocked that off. So at least it'll hold the water in the swale. Lots of tadpoles in there. So we piled a whole lot of clay on this opening here, but it's still eroding. This pond just isn't big enough to capture all the water we're getting running through here. Our road is basically a, a river or a wash that all of the water from about half a mile uphill runs straight down into our pond. So we need some more ponds and swales to handle the amount of water we get here during the monsoon. So after it overflows, it just runs off into the weeds down there. This footage is from a rain event about a week later, and as you can see, it's really overflowing the pond and swale here and flowing onto the rest of the property. Fortunately, it doesn't really cause a problem when it does this. It disperses over a large area and has time to soak in pretty well. But we would, in the future, like to put in some more berms and swales just to capture it all on the property better and just to manage the water better. Fortunately, also, it doesn't get to the house. The house is pretty high, and so even when it overflows like this, it stays away from the house and goes down to the road and, and doesn't cause any trouble. Well, and back to painting. We've finished up the second coat on this first batch of cabinet doors, and we've let it dry, and we're ready to start the next batch. We're hoping that we can get it finished in one more go. The next batch has quite a few doors and pretty much all of the drawer faces, and some of those I hadn't taken off yet, so I, I needed to remove those drawer faces and mark them so I could remember which drawer to put them back on. So I'm doing that here, removing those faces, marking the marking everything, and just getting set up for this next go-round. We plan to stick mostly with whites and grays, good neutral colors in the house, and so we've been looking for the perfect gray, and so we found a pre-mixed gray that we thought we would try, hoping that, you know, the pre-mixed gray would be a nice shade. It's so hard to find just the right shade. And so we tried this stuff, and it's an interesting color. This is actually our daughter that came over to help us for a little bit one evening, and so this is her painting it on. And this is interesting stuff. We found out as we were applying it that it has some purple <laughs> in it and that it's kind of a lavender. And so it's a kind of a dark gray lavender. It's a very interesting color. But we decided, well, this is in the guest bedroom. Let's just go with it. We'll see how it looks dry. And so we decided to keep, keep going on with it and, and reserve our decision on whether we wanted to use it in other parts of the house later. While she was working on that, I was in the entryway area painting the, one of the white walls. We're trying to use the same color of white on all the walls, just like we did on the ceilings. Just like to minimize the amount of paint colors we have, just makes it easier for touch-up later. Here I'm removing some clamps that I had used to make some glue repairs to these cabinet doors. They have a solid oak front, but on the back they have a oak laminate glued onto them so that you have a nice flat face on the back and that had started to come delaminated in some areas and so here's some that I hadn't fixed yet that I'm fixing so basically they're just barely starting to delaminate so there's just a little crack in some areas and so I kind of pry that crack open put some more glue in there give it some time to settle in and then I use clamps to clamp it down wipe off the excess and then I move on to the next one. So that's, you can kind of see a little bit more of the detail here. So it's kind of a tedious process of trying to get glue into those cracks. I don't want to pull them all the way off because they're still glued on quite well and I'd probably do some damage. I just want to make sure that those cracks that are starting to open up are glued back and that these doors are good and solid for another lifetime of use. This was quite a task, and I actually had to do this on, you know, all the doors, at least inspect all of the doors. Probably, yeah, maybe 75% of them had some amount of delamination that needed repair, some worse than others. 
but most of them I ended up using, you know, quite a few clamps to get little spots glued. In fact, that was one of my issues was running out of clamps. I only have so many of these little clamps, and I, when you use four or five per door, you run out of them pretty quickly. But in any case, I think I'm going to have enough to get the last batch done here and be ready to finish these up and finish the painting on these doors. Once these are all glued up and I've wiped off any excess, I'll leave these clamps on overnight and they'll be ready to go the next day. Here's a quick look at the pond and swale a couple of days later. As you can see, the water is soaking in nicely and making room for the next rain event. Well, back to painting. I'm still working on the white walls in the house. I'm actually working on the two walls in the bedroom that we're painting right. The other two will be painted gray. And April is getting back to working on these cabinet doors. She's just about to start painting this batch. We were able to fit all of the doors for the kitchen cabinets on the workbench this time, but we didn't have enough room for the bathroom cabinets, so we'll have to do that in yet another batch. Of course, that'll be a different color anyway, so that'll, that'll work out just fine. But she's about got them all organized and ready, and she's starting to apply the paint. I might mention here that April is only doing one heavy coat on the back. She found that that was sufficient to cover the back real nice, but she's doing two coats on the front. There are quite a few pieces here, but as you can see, April is making quick work of it. What we found is that this is actually a quite the multi-step process, and it actually ends up taking you several days because you end up waiting so long for, you know, dry times in between painting. So she's painting the backs of everything. The actual time it takes her to paint isn't that long, but she's going to have to wait for them to dry overnight, and then we can flip them over and do the front side. And she was able to get two coats on the front side in the same day, but still, you know, that's a whole nother day, and then we then the next day we can refresh, do a different batch. Sometimes we had to wait a day in between so that I could glue in between and wait for the glue to dry. So this ended up taking several days. Fortunately, there's always something to do though. And so we decided here to go ahead and load up and do our monthly trash haul. And so we're loading it into the back of our SUV. This is a lot of the drywall scraps and stuff that we've been accumulating for the last month. Still fits in with plenty of room to spare, but it's always nice to get things cleaned out and cleared up, get our space back. It's also nice to get this stuff hauled off before it gets too wet with these monsoon rains. That's been a problem lately. April's moving on to painting the faces of these lowers here. This goes pretty fast. She just uses a roller for the most of it and then finishes up with a brush. She's also getting the inside edge, which is nice. It'll give it a more even appearance when you open the doors and it doesn't cover up the screw holes that I'll need for the hinges. So I'll still be able to find those and use those previous screw holes. So that'll be real easy to get the doors back on, but this is coming along well. I'm in the guest bedroom putting on the second coat of that interesting gray stuff, that kind of dark lavender gray uh, that our daughter had got started for us the other day. As you can see here in this light, it looks quite a bit lighter. This color is growing on us. It, it has a very mild purplish tone and it's actually quite pleasant. So I think it's going to work really well in the guest bedroom here but we've decided not to use it in the living area. We were going to paint the main tall wall in the living area this, but we decided to go with a more of a neutral gray color for that. Here I've just finished up painting around the window and I decided to go ahead and pull the tape off while it's still wet. You kind of have two options. You can pull it off while it's wet and kind of take your chances there, or you can wait till it dries. But if you wait till it dries, you, you got to go around it with a knife or a razor blade first to kind of break the seal between the paint and the tape. So here it worked out well to just go ahead and pull it off when it was wet and it worked out great. I got a nice clean edge there. So beautiful day out here. About to go out and work in the house some. I'm going to do some painting. Today is Red's birthday. So he is 49 years old. Not quite 50. One more year. We're going to do a little painting this morning and then head into town this afternoon. So things are really greening up out here. So I've got the first coat on the second set of cabinets. So I'm going to put the second coat on. So that really hasn't been too bad of a process. Hasn't been taking too long. Red is working on painting the master bathroom, so we'll show you what's going on over at the house. Well, we decided we liked that lavender gray paint well enough to go ahead and paint some more with it. We decided it looked nice in, for some accent walls in the master bathroom and closet. So I'm working on the master bathroom in here, just painting one of the accent walls. Definitely looks a little more purpley up next to that purple drywall. 
it's it's interesting in different lights it looks a little more purplish than others but it's it's definitely a nice color these doors have dried overnight so they're ready to be flipped over and for april to paint the face so she's flipping those over i don't know if you saw but she's got little rocks underneath them to keep it up off of the paper and it works out really well for her she is painting most of it with a roller and then going back by hand with a brush to touch it up and get it all going in the right direction and just make sure it's good and if you've noticed april has been heading up the project with the cabinets she's been the only one working on that and we've done that on purpose it, we found that it's better just for consistency's sake for one person to kind of take a job and run with it and so april is doing that with the cabinets and also i think it's a whole lot better she's she's much more detail oriented than i am and she's doing a much better job on these doors than i would she just cares more about the details takes her time and, and does a better job than i would have i have a tendency to kind of rush through things so it's the next day and April is starting the second coat on the door faces. In the meanwhile, I'm in the background and I'm starting to prep this wall for painting. The first thing I need to do is go all around the windows and doors and seal up that crack that, that's always there between the drywall and the window face. When I put in the drywall, I just put the edge of the drywall as close to the window face as possible, but that leaves a little gap there. And so what I have to do is come back later and put a piece of tape all along the window frame itself, close to that edge, and then I fill in that little gap there with caulk, smooth it off with a, I believe I used a scraper to get a nice square corner on the caulk. And then once that dries, I'll be ready to come back in and paint. I'm starting to apply the first coat of gray to this wall. So we wanted this wall to be gray. And so we went and found a more neutral colored gray, a gray that doesn't have purple in it, like in the bedroom. And this looks pretty good. It was so hard to find a good neutral color of gray. So many of them have like a blue tinge to them or a pink tinge or a green tinge. It was really hard to find something that was truly just a gray color. But we're happy with the tone of this. It is a little bit darker than we wanted, but the tone is real nice. And so we're, we're moving forward with it. As I mentioned, we're not totally satisfied with the brightness of this gray, but we've decided to wait and see how it looks with the other elements in this room. You know, once we take off the paper and we see the poured concrete walls, that's going to add something to it. And there's, there's other interesting elements that'll be going on in this room. So I think we're going to hold our decision until we see it all together. We also used this color for a few walls in the closet in the entryway area and then moved on into the master bedroom. We're using it on two walls in the master bedroom. So here I am painting that and kind of going around the windows and doing some touch up stuff there. And now I'm back in the living room area putting on the second coat. So getting close to being done with this section of the house. So this second coat with this gray color will be my last coat of color on the house. So we're, we're trying to do as few colors as possible just to keep things simple. And so we're doing using this gray in here and in the master bedroom and all that has the first coat. So this coat that I'm working on now is the second coat. So once I get this done, that marks the completion of all the walls and ceilings in the house. Basically, the interior painting is done. I'm so looking forward to this. Um, there will still be a little cabinetry left that needs to be done. As you can see here, April is starting to bring in the doors for the bathroom cabinets. Those are going to be a different color, and so she'll be painting those in the future. But all of the walls and ceilings are done. So excited to be done with the painting in this house. In our next episode, we'll be installing the cabinet doors, working on a really cool accent wall that we alluded to way back when, and we'll be uncovering the poured concrete walls, and you'll be able to see all that together. So stay tuned.